welcome to this horror show special cooking segment called Killing It in the Kitchen. I'm your host, Brittany Lee, and we are going to be making a three course horror themed dinner tonight, which is going to include a pumpkin shaped cheese ball, meatloaf hand with mashed potatoes, toxic macaroni and cheese. We're gonna have a blood clot brain cupcake, and we're gonna finish the night off with the Vampire Eclipse cocktail. And now all we gotta do is prep our ingredients. I'm gonna start mincing up the onions for the hand meatloaf. Down the sizes, and slice down through. Some upside wings. Ooh, so much work went into making a meatloaf. Everybody acts like it's the stain of the earth, and hey, you cut up all these vegetables, you put them on all this meat, and everybody's just like. casserole where you just throw all the ingredients in the pot and just throw it in the oven. This thing actually takes a lot of effort. Much better. Okay. These ones? These are for the fingernails and the bones of the meatloaf hand. We have one bone and I got some fingernails. All of our fingernails. We got ten fingernails here. Which I'm gonna in this little bowl, wrist bone. When you get these wrist bones, you just peel deep down into the center of the onion. Get that little skinny part. There you go. And now, Red pepper, we want to save the stem. You want to try to find a nice stem. This one didn't get a very nice stem, but the other one we have has a pretty nice stem. So you want to save the stem for the end of, for, the, for when you finish making the cheese ball, because that's going to be the stem of your pumpkin for your cheese ball. It's this guy right here. So make sure to cut all this stuff away. Don't cut the stem. Yes. Cut all the extra stuff off the bottom of the stem. Then you're going to take this stem, you're going to get it damp. Like this. Get a paper towel, stem, wrap it up, and you're going to put it in the fridge until your cheese ball is set. So now we're finishing up the ingredients for our pumpkin shaped cheese ball. So we have our shredded cheddar cheese, thank you Cecil. We have our softened cream cheese, our vegetable cream cheese, our red pepper, our green onion, and now we're pulling out our spicy ranch mix. And we need two tablespoons of spicy ranch mix. Yep, that's it. That's, that's all she wrote. And that's our ingredients for the pumpkin shaped cheese ball. The only thing else you're going to need is some plastic wrap and some rubber bands or twine to make the pumpkin shape. But we'll cover that when we're finishing the pumpkin shaped cheese ball. So next we're going to go on to the toxic mac and cheese. All right, now we're going to put together all the ingredients that we have left for the toxic mac and cheese, which we prepared some diced onions and minced garlic for already. So we also have the artichoke hearts that are canned, which makes that easy. Um, we got the green food coloring for it, which makes it 
toxic. Um, helps make it more toxic. Kids are going to think it's toxic because it has, you know, artichokes and spinach in it. Okay, so we need two cups of gemelli pasta. I hope that's how you say that. I don't know if I'm trying to get chocolate. Half of this quarter, quarter artichokes, 14 ounce can. So, you know, if they have a smaller one, you guys can get a smaller one because I only used half of it. Ah, oh, no. Nice. Way to make a mess, pretty. Good job. Good job. Alright. So, okay. there we have One cup of cheese, one cup of mozzarella for on top, one cup for inside, one quarter cup of the Parmesan. And then one cup of uh, Swiss. And those are all the cheeses that we need for our toxic mac and cheese. So, whole cup of heavy cream for this going to be crazy, awesome, rich, toxic mac and cheese. And there we have it. It's all of our ingredients for our toxic mac and cheese. Um, and I am putting together all the ingredients for the brain blood clot cupcakes because that's going to be the first thing we're starting with. So I want to make sure I have all those ingredients together after I get all the other ingredients together to start. So let's start with all these dry ingredients way over here. Okay. Now we have all of our cupcake ingredients together. Got our oven preheated, got our bowl right here, our mixing bowl. And we're going to start with our softened butter. One and a half cups, or one and a half cups, or one and a half sticks, excuse me, of butter. Mixing bowl. And whether you have a mix, mixing stand, uh, the mixing standard, a stand mixer or a hand mixer, you know, put it in your bowl. Put your attachment on your mixer. Oh, tile attachment. Your stand mixer. Start to get in the batter. You know, soft and moist and everything combined. Uh, it's always good to have a rubber spatula. Scrape your sides of your bowls down so you can make sure everything blends. Turn it off for a second. Lift your lid up. Eggs. One, one at a time. You add eggs one at a time. Always. Just take this like one and a half tablespoon measuring cup. Overfill it a little bit. Scoop it here. You know, leave them about eh, two thirds. Two thirds full, halfway two thirds ish. There we go. And then go and put them in the oven for 18 to 20 minutes. This one's a little bit more in here. Tens filled with our cupcake batter. Now we're gonna put them in the oven. Yeah, we're gonna put them in the oven because it's preheated. And we're going to leave them in there for 18 to 20 minutes. We're going to check them in 18 minutes. Actually, because I'm paranoid, I'm going to check them in 15 minutes. But. Time to check the cupcakes. You 
if you don't have toothpicks to poke the cupcakes, you can always press on the tops. If they spring back, they're ready. Our cupcakes spring back, so they're ready. There's our cupcakes right now. I'm gonna turn them out and let them cool off. And then take the rest of our batter and our muffin tin. And reline our muffin tin. later after the cupcakes are completely cooled. We want to cool the cupcakes completely because if you frost cupcakes before they're completely cooled, your frosting will melt and you will have a big frosting cupcake mess. It's not fun. Glaze. Yeah. Melted frosting glaze. It's only fun if you're playing it. 15 minutes. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to finish putting all of our ingredients together for our baked our baked human hand, which is our meatloaf hand. Um, we're going to need two tablespoons of unsalted butter, which we can get right here. Um, we're going to need that minced onion that we talked about from before, our our uh, our bones and our fingernails. We got our celery, our carrots, our um, garlic. We got our green onion and we got our parsley here. And then we have our two meats, our ground chunk and our uh, Italian sausage. So we're gonna mix all this together. We're gonna mix our meats together. First, we're gonna cook up our, our vegetables. We're gonna heat them up on the stove for a little bit. We're gonna melt our butter in the pot, in the pot, in the pan for a few minutes. Um, then we're gonna cook up the onions and soften up the uh, carrots. I know that, get them all. Flavors all married together, so I'm gonna come over here and turn that stove on. Put two tablespoons of butter in there. Two tablespoons of butter. Put that in there. Let it melt down. And as soon as that melts down and starts to, uh, as soon as that starts to foam. We'll add in the onions, celery, and carrot, and we'll get that heated up. Get all those vegetables nice and tender. Get these eggs out here, because I don't need these in here. I need to mix those in with our meats. And we need one and a half pounds of the ground chuck and a half pound of Italian sausage. Cut these in half because we have a pound of sausage and a pound of ground beef. I only need half of each one of them. And after we get our vegetables softened up, we can mix them all in there, get them all nice and incorporated. But right now, I need to finish getting the rest of the ingredients together to make this while this butter is melting. So I got the Worcestershire sauce, I got the ketchup. Mm. Lovely sound. Just love the sound. Now, the butter is foaming, so we will add. Throw them with the butter and give them to tenderize for a little bit. Cook them for about three to five minutes before you add in the garlic. I think we add in the salt and pepper then too, right? Mm -hmm. Just buy breadcrumbs. Make your life easy. The recipe I read just says, just use two slices of bread, make your own breadcrumbs. Everybody's like, oh my gosh, that's such a great idea. Yeah, unless you're crushed for time. Our vegetables for the meatloaf are getting nice and, and colored from the heat. They look awesome. Getting ready to put the lid on them in just a minute. So after you're finished cooking the vegetables for the additional five minutes when they're covered, remember to stir them occasionally. You don't want to burn your vegetables. After you've cooked them for those five minutes, you're going to add in these two ingredients, which I'm going to make sure I have ready and on hand so I don't forget to do that. Covering my vegetables right now. so. 
Okay, and then after we cook that, we take our ketchup and our Worcestershire sauce, so we pour it in here, and then we cook our vegetables for one more minute afterwards. Cook that for a few more seconds. Well, and after we finish cooking up those vegetables, get them all tender and heated through, that's when we pull them off and let them cool. So that way we can mix them into the sausage and the ground beef. So, hopefully I have a hand one here. Hold this like this. Put them here. And the vegetables cooling down so they don't cook the meat or me when I'm going to mix them into the meat. And our vegetables to cool, just take your vegetables, find a large surface and spread them out super thin, they'll cool off really quick. A lot quicker than if they were in a big bowl together, all squished, keeping each other hot. There we go. Set that on the side, let it cool down. Uh, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to grease this down, so that way the meat comes out of it really easily. I'm going to use coconut oil for that because I have some in a spray can. You can use whatever you want. Ham, uh, vegetable oil, butter, anything. Just make sure you shh, real quick. A little salt and pepper for our meat here. this together without squishing it through our fingers, you know, without trying to like squeeze it like a little kid would do guy at the part in it. start stuffing this uh this meat in this hand since those cupcakes are taking their sweetest time for some reason. Did you need to spray it with an stick? Oh never mind. I did. I sprayed it with the uh, Nice. It works. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be an eight roll pan on a bed of mashed potatoes, and um, with uh, toxic mac and cheese on the side. Um, we have a cheese pumpkin, pumpkin cheese ball, um, and then uh, a cupcake and drink. But we need someone to help us eat it. So we might as well hang out after and maybe until we're done. What's that? It's the on the grenade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. the on the grenade, thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's a good grenade though. Mm -hmm. A tasty grenade. There are worse grenades to fall on, that's for sure. This is true. So what, what's the deal then? You need to take out the cupcakes and put that in and then you're good for cupcakes now. Right? Shit, take out the cupcakes, please. Okay. That's right. She wanted to leave it. No, 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 leave it on because the meatloaf cooks at the same temperature. Okay. My meatloaf's getting ready to go in just as soon as I put the cheese on it. Why is only one finger coming? I don't like 
that. That's not what I want to happen. There you go. There it is. Nice. Good work. Whew. Good work. That was lucky. <laughs> it fell just the right place. Oh, I'm putting the, sorry, I just finished filling the, the, putting the bones in for the, the onions, for the bones, and then I put the, uh, little onion pieces on for the fingernails, and now I'm putting the skin, which is provolone cheese, on the hands. Uh, you wanna, you want thin slices of cheese, cause, uh, you don't want it to puddle up in the fingers too much. Take this and we're gonna put it in the oven and I forgot to put the ketchup underneath it, but oh well. Okay, so we just took the meatloaf hands and we stuck them in the oven. We're gonna leave them in there for two hours at 350 degrees while they bake and get nice and yummy. All right, I'll see you guys then. Okay guys, lucky accident. Uh, Cecil made a comment while he was working at the computer that it smelled really good in the house, so I decided, hmm, let's go check on those meatloaf hands. It's only been 54 minutes. I checked on those hands. They're done. They're nice and perfect, ready to come out of the oven. So let's pull them out. Here they are. Nice and, uh, creepy looking. Bony. Yeah, like the, like the bones protruding out the back. They'll, they'll be even more appetizing once we, uh, put them on their beds of mashed potatoes. Stay tuned for what that looks like. Alright guys, we're gonna put together this pumpkin shaped cheese ball. And what that consists of is we got the cream cheese, we got the vegetable cream cheese, we got this spicy ranch mix, a red pepper, three green onions, and some cheddar cheese, sharp cheddar cheese to go on the outside of that ball. Okay, and then we're gonna put it all inside this uh, plastic wrap here, and we're gonna wrap it up with twine because I don't have any rubber bands, and the twine worked really well for me. Um, so what we're gonna do, what we're gonna start with is this Room temperature softened cream cheese. We're gonna put it in our bowl. And we're also gonna open up this vegetable cream cheese, put it in our bowl too. Uh, I got a stand mixer, so I'm putting it in the bowl of my stand mixer. I'm gonna mix the two cream cheeses together with that. If you have a electric mixer, you can use that. If you're brave, you can mix it by hand. Whatever you choose, pick your poison. cheeses are almost fully combined. Scrape them down in there a little bit. So I can fill it. Perfect. Side up. 
take this guy off right here. Bring this over here so you guys can see better. Scrape all this cream cheese mixture back into the bowl off of the mixer paddle. Spicy ranch mix also gives the cream cheese kind of an orange color. Makes it more pumpkin-y. cheeses mixed in together. Nice and uniform mix. You get those mixed in and you add in your red pepper and your onion and nicely, gently, I guess, gently stir those into the cheese mixture. All mixed in there. Recipe says a quarter cup. I probably use a little bit more than that. The recipe calls for two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. I think I have like four and I'm probably going to use it all because I used it all last time because this, this, this thing was difficult to put together. Okay, so try the best you can is all I can say for this tip to make it into a ball before you get it out of the bowl. I'm gonna try this time to keep it in a ball shape while planting it in the middle of the cheese. Not bad. I'd say that was fairly successful. You wouldn't think that would matter. You think you could just squish it into a ball afterwards? Trust me, it matters. What I'm gonna do? I'm gonna sprinkle it around my cheese ball. Okay, guys, keep your plastic wrap handy. I got two pieces of plastic wrap. One laid out this way. One laid out this way. But I got more here because I'm probably gonna use at least four pieces. Because you don't want it busting apart on you. Ask me how I know. How do you know? How do you happen? know? Because it happened and it was awful. It was miserable. Alright, so let's try and see. I think I have some extra cheese this time. And that's going to be the case last time. Alright. So, here, try to keep this ball shape. I can feel your guys' eyes on me. <laughs> these these two over here are like just waiting. They're like, it's gonna blow. <laughs> Good grief, y'all! It's taking me way too long to figure out how to tie this knot. I think I finally got it. All right, there we go. And that is our pumpkin cheese ball. Now we just take this guy and we put him in the fridge for at least two hours, preferably overnight. Very preferably overnight. Hey guys, we're back again. And now we're starting the toxic mac and cheese. We got all of our ingredients together here. We got our uh, jameli pasta, our artichokes, our parmesan, our cornstarch. We got uh, one cup of mozzarella here and the other cup over here for the top. We got our onions, we got our heavy cream. We got our spinach, our minced garlic. This is our, oh, our Swiss, our shredded Swiss, 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 Swiss. 
our sweat shredded Swiss, say that 10 times fast, and this is pepper and garlic salt. All right, so let's see. First thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Thank you, Cecil, for reminding me to do that. And then you want to grease this casserole dish. I'm going to do that with some butter because I got a lot of it and I got it all out nice and warm, room temperature, so it's easy to work with. So I'm going to grab a paper towel here, this. Grandmother would be proud. Oh yeah. Give me some of that butter. Give me some of that butter. <laughs> Whole pan. There we go. All the way around. All the way around up all the edges. Oh, you grease that pan. Oh yeah. You grease it. Grease, grease the whole pan. Get it in every crevice. <laughs> when you do this, you want to boil your water first. And when you put your water on to boil, you want to pour a bunch of salt in there, like, like a good, good solid handful of salt, like, like seriously a full palm full of salt. Because what that's going to do is that's going to season your water, which is going to season your pasta. And that's really the only way you have to season your pasta is by seasoning the water. So. You put salt in your water and then you boil your pasta in the salted water and it seasons your pasta. And it also supposedly makes your pasta boil faster because it like raises the boiling temperature or whatever. I don't know. I just know it seasons your pasta. Anyways, so we have all of our other ingredients here that we will be adding to our cooked pasta in a large bowl after comes out and we drain it. I'm going to add a couple drops of this green food coloring to my cream so that way we get green uh mac and cheese. I mean we're using heavy cream. Let's see. I think we use a couple more drops of that because that looks minty and not toxic. Mixing more food coloring in here, trying to get the right color. I don't want it to look like we got minty green, you know, minty green mac and cheese. That that just that just sounds really gross. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. After we start mixing everything together, maybe it won't be so bad. Okay, so. This is starting to smoke, and we're starting to get that vapor rise on it, so our water is almost boiling, almost there. Oh, uh, so you know what we can do right now? While we're waiting for our water to boil, we can work on our cupcakes here. We got all of our toxic mac and cheese stuff. We're gonna put over here, like this. If you have a cupcake corer, this would be the perfect time to put that to use. I do not, so I don't have that option. So here I am cutting holes in cupcakes and yeah. <laughs> oh, I can hear my water boiling, which is awesome, which means I can put my pasta in my water. Give it a quick stir. There we go. Okay. We'll let that pop. 
pot to boil till it's al dente. I want it to be just a little bit firm so that way it doesn't overcook when it goes into the oven. Nothing worse than overcooked pasta. All right, there we go. Last cupcake sliced open. All the lids are kept by them. They made, they were so nice to me. And they made this a pop top lid. Now, I just need to grab, there you are, my teaspoon measure. Be sure to grab at least one cherry for each one. All of them can have a couple because it pulls out more cherries worth. There you go. You can take two. Get some of that, that pie filling in there too. Just the cherries. cupcakes however big you want. If you want to put like one cherry in the middle or if you want to be able to put like three cherries in the middle. Come on in your kitchen. You do. Take up some space. Alright, there we go. Let's have our mixing bowl. And we're going to put our noodles. Open the package of cream cheese. There she is. Put that in there. After we get that in there, we pour in all the other cheeses that we got. This is our mozzarella right here. Get that out. Parmesan cheese right here. Our onions here. Mix and mix. Got those. Sprinkle this cornstarch in there. make all the awesomeness. And it's finally mixed enough. See all the cream cheese is melted through everything and it's mixed in and it's getting kind of saucy. We got noodle sauciness. Okay. And now we're going to take our saucy noodleness and we're going to mix in our green half and half. It's like a shamrock more than it looks like a toxic shamrock and cheese. Shamrock shake or something. Oh man. Uh, once again, just do the slow circles around, around the outside, lift it up through the middle. Just slowly mixing it in there. Don't don't crush your noodles. And then we're gonna transfer it over to our baking dish right here. cupcakes like so squish them back on there I hope we felt that one a little bit that's okay squish the lids back on so we can put the brains on top of the cupcakes and you can use whatever kind of cupcake recipe you want you know that'll accommodate the cherry in the middle there we go yeah I guess it goes off to the side for a minute now I'm gonna peel these potatoes There we go. All potatoes peeled. Out 
take more and rinse them off. We're going to take these potatoes and we're going to slice them. I'm not going to dice them. We're going to slice them. Potatoes. You'll put it on the stove to boil. Medium high heat. Like, well, not me like high, high low. Like not high high, but not not medium low, not medium high. You know what I'm saying? That spot in between. Yeah, whatever. Okay, so now the potatoes are done boiling, so we're going to take those off, we're going to strain them, and then we're going to mash them in our stand mixer. Got maybe uh, half a teaspoon of salt. For our frosting, we need our six and a half cups of confectioner sugar, our two eight ounce packages of cream cheese softened, and our two sticks of butter softened. So what we're going to do is we're going to cream together the butter and the cream cheese until they're well combined. There we go. Now we got all the cream cheese and all the butter in there. All right. We got our frosting here. It's ready for our food coloring. color for our pink brains, right? Yeah. Here, we're making our own piping bag because I don't have any piping bags and don't necessarily need a piping bag if you have a Ziploc and you're just making a, a simple round tip design. You don't, you don't need it because it's not being fancy. Although, I do want one. I just don't have one. You can't get by decorating a lot of cupcakes without them. while those potatoes cool down just a little bit so I can handle them. I need scissors right here. Cut a little hole in the tip here. In the bag. And then I'm gonna make a line down the middle. Line down the middle. Yeah. Wiggly line. brain clot cupcakes all iced all ready to go and now we can finish up the meat hands and the meat the meatloaf hands excuse me with the mashed potatoes all right so let me move these cupcakes out of the way and then we can get that done. 
All right, so now we have our plates for our meat ham and our mashed potatoes. Remove. So we're going to put some of the mashed potatoes in a bag, just like we did with the frosting, because we're going to do a little bit of piping here to give these hands some definition. And yeah, nice and tight in between those fingers. So all you see is mashed potatoes around the hand. Take the rest of our potatoes and just kind of make a little potato display around our hand. This is mashed potatoes with our hands. As you might notice, it's not the same cheese ball from earlier. This is a cheese ball I made last night because it's better to let it sit overnight. So what we're going to do now, we're going to cut this twine Move it, pumpkin shaped cheese ball. Ooh, that one's nice and deep. What we're gonna try to do is very carefully pull all this plastic wrap off here. There's a lot on here. Cause I got scared. Ah, we're getting we're getting to cheese. I, I can see actual cheese color, not just plastic. There we go. Voila. Our stem we save from our red pepper. Here's our stem from our red pepper. All we do is just take that and just push it in the middle, like that. So now it looks like a pumpkin. And then we're going to take our toxic mac and cheese for display purposes and we're going to put it in this cute little pumpkin right here. It's cocktail hour, so let's make a cocktail. A vampire eclipse. Okay. This calls for grenadine, a maraschino cherry, orange juice, and rum. Oh, there we go. Some grenadine down in the bottom. Look at that. Grenadine. Like that. And then we go orange juice, which I guess you're supposed to slowly pour it on the side so it doesn't mix. We'll see if that works. I'm no bartender, so it seems to be mixing, but there we go, like that, kind of. Next time I'll maybe use a spoon. Okay, and then we put, then we put the cherry in there. Your cherry. Supposed to drop it in the like that. And then you're supposed to pour this down the side left like that. And it's supposed to be layered, but didn't quite work out that way. Next time I'll use a spoon, maybe it'll layer it better. Okay. But there we go. There's our vampire clip shot. With our Rum, orange juice, grenadine, and maraschino cherry. Cheers. Not bad. <laughs> Alright guys, next up we'll show you the full spread that we have, everything completed together. And we'll have a few of these little cocktails up so you can see what they look like. So, catch me over there. 
All right, everybody, here we are. We have our pumpkin-shaped cheese ball. We have our meatloaf hands, our human baked hands, on our beds of mashed potatoes. Toxic macaroni and cheese. Our brain blood clot cupcakes. And our vampire eclipse cocktails. All right guys, so that concludes our first segment of Killing It in the Kitchen. I've been Brittany Lee, and remember, stay scared. Mm -hmm.